United States is experiencing a growing epidemic that needs public awareness. That epidemic is the misuse, addiction, and ultimate overdose of prescription pain medications called opiates. Experts estimate that every day in the United States, an average of 44 people die from opiate overdose, and many more people become addicted. In some states, death from opiate overdose take more lives than car accidents. Why is this happening? Opiate addiction is often a biological response to misuse of properly prescribed pain medications. Opiates are prescribed by a physician, but are readily available in households after the prescription is filled. People who continue to take opiate prescriptions outside of the guidance of a physician to get high become addicted and very often switch to heroin when their supply of pills runs out. I started using drugs when I was 16. Um, started smoking marijuana and um, recreational party drugs. Drug abuse could be recognized by pills disappearing, money disappearing, uh, slurred speech, altered behavior, hyper or overdramatic behavior uh, from a kid who ordinarily wouldn't be like that. Uh, my son was 29 years old and 10 months when he passed away from a cocaine and fentanyl overdose. He was, um, he had a bachelor's degree from the University of Florida. He had a master's degree, in his MBA, and he was working on taking a CPA test. And he was a very charismatic, um, great, great guy, loving guy, loved his family and friends, and was hardworking and very into sports, and just the all-American boy. What's more concerning than finding out one of your patients is addicted is finding out one of them has overdosed. What's more concerning than finding out your patient has overdosed is that they've overdosed and died. The drug problem became real to me in my residency when I learned that one of my colleagues was found dead in a bathtub with a needle injecting fentanyl into his arm. Well, it started when he was 17 years old in high school with a football injury and he broke his arm and he had to have two surgeries and they prescribed Oxycontin at that time. And that's when we noticed a problem starting and he was able to go on to college. He graduated, he, he maintained his academic scholarship, but we did notice his grades starting to go down, but he was still functioning and, and had us convinced that everything was fine. The perception is that opiate misuse is a problem only among people who live on the streets or who have a criminal history. The reality is that it is misused by every class of people such as teenagers, college students, parents, and increasingly with the elderly. Opiates can be as addictive as street drugs and just as easy to overdose. Loved ones who are prescribed opiates to treat pain after an injury or accident can find they are unable to stop taking them without severe withdrawal symptoms. Recognizing the problem is the first step to prevent opiate addiction and overdose. It's just like it takes over their soul. They're not themselves anymore. When drug use escalates beyond simple episodic abuse, closer to addiction, we see dysfunction. Dysfunction in relationships, dysfunctions in school, school performance, dysfunction in athletics, uh, dysfunction in areas of their life where they previously might have had interests or hobbies, activities, church that they're no longer interested in. I think if you see that your kid's peer group has changed from a uh, favorable to an unfavorable uh, style or demographic, that might be a concern for your teen's drug use. And then I started seeking um, things around the house, you know, maybe my uh, maybe my mother who had you know um, things in her medicine cabinet which were legitimate reasons that she had them there you know maybe she had some surgery or maybe she had a uh, pain um, then I would say hey you know somebody told me that they got this from their mom and and um, my mom trusted me and my dad trusted me and they had no idea but me being the mischievous um, you know an honest person at the time I wanted to find it out and he said, because mom, I really thought I could handle it. And he couldn't. It took him over completely. What can you do to prevent misuse of pain medication? Besides talking to your loved ones about the dangers of taking opiates, 
Start the conversation with your physician about alternatives when pain management is needed. So my 17-year-old daughter was told that she should get her wisdom teeth excised. And we uh, spoke with the oral surgeon, and he said that every teenager who gets their wisdom teeth excised gets 20 hydrocodone tablets for post-operative pain. I said, well, is it possible we could just use Tylenol with coating? And he said, yes, that would be fine. My daughter used that and was able to stop before the 20 pills were out with good pain control. I wasn't okay. I wasn't accepting. I wanted to say that I was going to play God. Um, I didn't understand that it was like, hey, you're either going to do the right thing and things are going to work out and you're going to learn how to deal with it and manage life, or you're going to avoid life and avoid growth and avoid character building things um, by covering it up. The best way to prevent addiction to opiates is to not take them or even try them. But I don't think in his mind he ever thought there really was a problem. It was very tiring on all of us. Um, it was upsetting. There's times you could become angry. Um, but now knowing what I know, it's a disease and these people need help. If I would have not stopped when I stopped, I would have been dead. If you think that you or your loved one is misusing or is addicted to pain medications, consult with a physician immediately. Treatment is available for people with substance abuse disorder that could include any combination of behavioral counseling, treatment with medication, or inpatient or outpatient intervention. It is important to be supportive and caring with your loved ones who struggle with addiction and get help from a professional. Don't be afraid. Today is a day where we can have the tools to get through this thing they call life that we don't know how to do it the right way on our own. But um, by the grace of God, by His grace, we can be here and sit here today and have this discussion.